Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Pal Lane Arts, and I am standing with artist Luke Whiteman and his two beautiful pieces, which Luke is going to introduce to us. Hi, um, this piece is called In Threes, and this piece is called Bells Rang Regret. Uh, they're kind of acrylic mixed media, a little bit of graphite, mostly acrylic and gesso. Uh, I had spent years, I'm an art teacher, and a lot of my art for many years was pretty much primarily in my sketchbooks. And I wanted to try to kind of find a space in between painting and drawing on a larger scale. Uh, and COVID kind of helped give me time to do that. So I started <laughs> painting and this is kind of where I am. I did a lot of non-objective work. And over the years, I've been kind of letting abstraction and actual objects kind of creep into the um, into the paintings and into the work, whether it's uh, a, a snippet from a song that I hear that I'm listening to, I always have music on when I'm painting or drawing, um, and just certain shapes, they might kind of remind me of things, and I just, rather than go away from that and keep it non-objective, started sort of embracing it. Well, I'm looking here at both of these pieces, and actually, Luke is not not quite being fully honest. He has he's a wonderful printmaker, wonderful painter, and yes, someone who is always drawing. <laughs> and um, you can see that actually in his work. It mm -hmm. has that graphic quality along with beautiful lines, wonderful shapes. But what I was going to ask about is the two different palettes. Um, they're related, but they're different. Yeah, one is cool with hints of warm and one is warm with hints of cool. A lot of times the reason for that is I would set up two or three big paintings and, and a bunch of small ones sometimes and I don't like to waste paint. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I kind of will start using that, like an artist. that dark Prussian <laughs> blue is kind of like my drawing layer um, that I kind of go back and forth to and a lot of times I'll use similar colors from canvas to canvas. And then sometimes I'll like purposely take one and set it aside so it, it kind of lacks another one. Um, and there's even parts where um, if you butt some of the paintings up together in the studio, you can see the brush stroke literally goes from one into the other. And then I'll shuffle them around and do it again. Yeah. And some of that survives the layers and some of it doesn't. Yeah, well, you were saying about, you know, that you um, draw a lot and you use graphite and charcoal in these and you can actually see some places where there's words that might be in graphite or little marks there's another word up here in paint so what do the words do for you yeah how do you these are clearly stories how do you kind of it's funny because i don't always like i'm not very really literal with the words in, in my mind anyway a lot of it could be a song i'm listening to um or just a word that sticks out to me and I just throw it in there and I think about the shapes they make. I think a lot of these numbers, I believe I heard the number three in the song and I stuck it in there. And then I, lo I love the negative space between letters and numbers. So I just sort of pop in numbers in there pretty randomly, but thinking about the spacing. Um, and then, I'm here and see, I was thinking, oh, he's thinking Jasper Johns. I, I, well, yeah, you're always thinking. <laughs> well, no, you guys are always thinking Jasper Johns. <laughs> so, so yeah, and I was uh, actually, you know, this was pretty. I had just been to the Jasper Johns show when I was working. Oh yeah. It, so, uh, so actually, yeah, I think that was whether it was conscious or not. Uh, really, that stuff kind of creeps in, and I've usually always been like, no, shut all these influences out. And and over the past four or five years, I've just kind of opened the floodgate and like, no, put them all in and see what what uh, those things have in common. Uh, and I like these like really ambiguous shapes where people could say, that's a feather, that's a leaf, that's a stem, like, and they're not really sure which one it is. Like, I like the duality yeah. of things. Well, you have kind of a, a lot of that going on because on one hand, uh, these could be faces or these could be skulls. Um, this could be uh, a figure. There's something that's flying up there um, both of them have vestiges of what could possibly be 
I'm seeing them as cups or mugs. Well, or... especially at the one in the top right, it looks like uh, you're making a latte. Yeah. yeah I'm usually, <laughs> or a straw, maybe. I'm usually holding coffee while I'm like looking at these, and that, those shapes definitely get in there. Yeah. And like bells and flowers and all these hollow cylinders. Uh, sometimes they could maybe even be teeth or fingers. I like that they can kind of be all these things and none of these things. Yeah. And people kind of can, they have to decide. Well, and I find something really interesting is there's definitely a commonality between these two that they pair really well together, but they almost have inverse approaches because in the one you're utilizing a lot of white and underpainting, uh, I guess not underpainting, but like rawness. And in the other one, you're, it's very tight and you have a lot of different color and shapes that are one's looser, one's tighter. And I find that you're saying you're saying that and I'm I'm looking at it and it's like one is rolling from here and reaching up, the yeah. other is falling down. I or also can like condensing. Like it gets looser as you get lower. Which I love these two together. I think that they really speak nicely together. Thank you. They do. So um, as you as you're going through, um, is this one? Abstract artists seem to work in one of two ways. They um, they see something and they start with some essence of it, and then and they, I should I say see they sense something and start from an essence of something, and then they build upon that essence. There are other people. Who sit start with a mark and then start with a gesture and which are you? That's I'm the gesture. I, I'm, I love mark making and I mean there was days, months where I would every day just fill the sketchbook with little dashes and hundreds and thousands of them. And like I just love mark making and having your own visual vocabulary. Yeah. Even as a I'm sure anybody that's ever taught art, I teach art from elementary to middle school and I could recognize my kids, like certain kids make certain marks and um, and it's the same with famous artists down the kindergartners, like you're just, oh, that, that's an Addison or whatever. You just, <laughs> you, you, you know what kid did it. And I like, I love that. Um, and I always try to add to my vocabulary, my visual language. So I like to make these marks and, and for years in my sketchbook in the classroom, my kids would see it. And it's, oh, that looks like a bunny rabbit. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, well, why not? Why, why, why are they wrong? It's, if that's what they see. It's valid. Whatever the viewer brings to it, they're gonna, that's what they're going to see. So I sort of kind of, rather than go away from the objectivity of it, kind of stepping into it a little further. But then like, I find that oh, yeah, it kind of also looks like a plant or it also looks like, um, a tool of some sort and I kind of just try to put a little bit of all of those things in once so people have to really think about it and make their own decisions. One of the things I think is really cool about especially uh, in threes is well I'm always going to juxtaposition the two against each other is that it looks like you're almost you evolve this into almost overlapping timelines and scenes in a space where you have different layers of what's going on all at once that evoke a certain feeling. I also really like that you have feathers and then it looks like that, uh, the shape of the top has wings. I really like that. Yeah. And, and again, this is one of my more literal ones where I really did lean into it. And, and I started thinking, oh, the feathers could be leaves or feathers. Yeah. And again, I was in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I saw the Jasper John stuff. I always see the modern stuff. But I always like to go see like the old like religious stuff too. Yeah. And I normally you know, I don't put that stuff in my work normally except for my sketchbooks usually. Let me just you well, know. Well, because you never know where like the inspiration is going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. This could be like a Mary figure, or angels, or, or I was thinking you see so many of these paintings where they're yeah. in these classical compositions. So I started kind of putting those things in. Yeah, I almost see this, this, and this is like three masks. So we have this that, of course with your blue outline reminds me of Cezanne. And then this, this, and this, I'm like, did they go to the barns? Did they miss something? <laughs> but I was definitely thinking of the skull at the bottom of the Vander uh, Viden yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, crucifixion, yeah. which is my, <laughs> that's my favorite. I could just sit there for an hour and stare at that beautiful painting. So I was just kind of letting all these different little things in in very, very yeah. loose kind of way. Well, and the one on the right, it almost seems to me that uh, the bells uh, rang regret um, 
it almost seems to me like you were it, like, it's more of a objective, like still life. And then with hands reaching in. Yeah, it's very active. I mean, I can see what you're saying as still life, but then it becomes not still because it see, it reminds me of old Lang Syne. I, can, I almost feel like oh, yeah. everyone <laughs> is clicking their legs and, and moving on. Both of these are very active. Yeah. Very active. Well, and I think a lot of my work too will have like these uh, like C shapes on the edges. And I think too, it started as a subconscious thing, maybe like thumbs holding our rectangular devices <laughs> all the time. So I thought that's funny. It looks like these big hands holding these rectangles. Yeah. And it's kind of, I sort of kind of play with that. And I do that a lot. Well, and I feel like there's so much in, like you have so much content in your work. It You can't really get the full idea of it from a picture. You really need to see it to see the push pull between the layers and the colors and the way that it all comes together. And that is why we need to have you come in and see Luke Wakeman's two wonderful paintings at Palin Arts. For Portray It. For Portray It. And I don't remember. From that. January 19th <laughs> through March 12th. Thank you, Carol. I know it because I have the card right there. I should have held it up. Maybe next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys.